Live Platoon, episode 44. This episode of Live Platoon is brought to you by the first lady of Blue Collar Records, Joni Cruz, and her new mixtape, Themedom, which can be downloaded right now on livemixtapes.com. So go download the mixtape and follow Joni Cruz on Twitter at Joni, J-O-N-I, Cruz, C-R-U-Z. Again, that's twitter.com forward slash Joni Cruz. Thank you for tuning in to this Live Platoon podcast. Live Platoon is here to educate promote and empower hip-hop artists around the world and i am your host live marco polo let's get into it to take play beat Thank you, Hip Hop World, for listening to Live Platoon. I am your host, the Hip Hop Podcast King, a.k.a. Live Marco Polo, a.k.a. I used to be a ticket taker at the Source Awards. And my guest today is Tripper Get'em. Tripper Get'em, are you ready to get live? Yeah, I'm I'm ready, man. All right, cool, man. Well, for the Live Platoon listeners as well as myself, man, if you would um, just kind of give us a, a brief rundown of yourself, any uh, your movement, your music you got coming out or put out in the past, and, um, you know, so we can really get a feel for who you are and what you're about, man. Uh, man, I'm based out of Louisiana. Uh, I've dropped over 40 mixtapes since 2009. I dropped uh, three studio albums since 2010. My last album came out in 2012. I uh got a clothing line, CBD on clothing. I'm working on a a sketch comedy series that's gonna drop May 27th on YouTube and Vimeo. And I'm um, just working on my new mixtape at the moment. Okay, um, sounds like you're crazy busy, man. Uh, how, what was the? Well, we'll get into that. I ain't going I ain't going to stress. All right, but as far as the comedy show, you say so you got a comedy um you you going to drop on YouTube? Yeah, it's going to drop okay. May 27th the Chip Get 'em show. Okay. Okay. Is that just going to be yourself or do you going to have guests or other people involved in that? How's that going to work, man? Uh it's mainly just going to be me and it's like me playing different sets of characters and like like it'll transition like I'll be playing one character in one scene and then I'll be playing another character within the same skit. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a running gag for the show is that I'm like every character. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, live platoon listeners, definitely. We, we need to, uh, you know, check out and be on the lookout for that. So we'll get you your, your contact information and YouTube before we're done here. So we can make sure we, you know, put the fans up on that one, man. That sounds like it's going to be crazy. Interesting, man. You definitely, you definitely got to think outside the box to come out with that one. So yeah, we, we want to see what that's about. Definitely. Yes, sir. Now, uh, what we're going to do is, man, to kick off everything, man, the first question we have here for you is we're looking for a, a quote. It, we, now, we, we normally it's a hip hop quote, but it can be a quote about anything. It could be your quote or whatever. But the quote we're looking for is the one that you kind of reach back to um, that just kind of helps you push through the day or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? What what quote would that be? Uh, it's a 50 cent quote. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, if you spend your days talking to someone who ain't got nothing going on, then what kind of information can they offer you? Mm, mm, okay okay and how how does that um you know what i'm saying do, do you kind of just look to that to to the, based upon what you're doing throughout your day is that how you were out yeah i mean i try not to surround myself with someone who doesn't see what i see or the people that's always negative someone that doesn't know you know what they're talking about and, you know they're trying to act like they know but they don't really know anything you know oh okay cool that's understandable there i like that when that's that's hot right there live platoon you need to Put that one into your your your, your note your notepad or your Evernote or something, man. That's a good one right there. <laughs> now, um, uh, with Live Platoon, man, we really like to 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 take a look at everything and and look at the hip hop culture as a whole. And you know, a lot of these artists, they look at. I'm sorry, a lot of the people watching the artists, they look at these videos or whatnot, or those who want to be artists, and they and then. You know what I'm saying? They don't realize that Lil Wayne, DMX, whoever, 50 have rough times, but they got to push through those rough times to get to the to the glory that we see. You know what I'm saying? We advertise the glory, but we don't really 
tell people the pain, you know, as much that we went through to get to that glory. So um, if you could, man, just share a story of adversity that you've been through. You know, you didn't drop, you know, over over 35, 40 mixtapes. So I know without a doubt all that wasn't just happy time where you really wanted to do it or it was just easy or whatnot. You know, it may have been family problems, computer problems, whatever it may be. But definitely if you could just share with us a story and just let the listeners know that you are real and they're going to go through real things as well on their journey. Uh, back when I first started, well, not well, about like maybe six, six months after I really started recording and I put out my first official mixtape back in 2009 uh my computer had messed up and uh, i had a laptop but the laptop didn't have sound on it so i couldn't really hear anything so you know what i did was i had a i had a palm centro at the time and i would record the uh, all the uh all the vocals on the phone and i would send it to the email and then i would I was using wave pad and I would put the uh the vocals on the wave pad and then I would burn it on a CD just so I could hear what it was sounding like trying to trying to match the vocals up with the beat and sometimes it wouldn't work sometimes <laughs> it just it wasn't sounding right so I had to keep burning them on CDs I probably do a bunch of like about five or six songs at a time whenever I was burning the CD so I didn't just waste go through the CDs like that but you know that was probably one of the one of the hardest times that I had mm. making the music and I, you know, I had to do what I had to do and I just wanted to make the music. Mm. And that was, that was the only way I could really do it at the time. But then a few months later, you know, I got a new computer and I got it back popping now. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I definitely like that story. Cause that showed you, you know, you didn't, you didn't stop just because you had computer problems or whatnot. You, you, you uh, press past that pain or that adversity and just still did what you had to do. Because I think that's, you know, with a lot of these artists, uh, uh, inspiring artists who are <laughs> listening to me, your voice right now, they kind of think that that same way. And they're thinking, oh, I don't have a computer. Or I don't have this or this is messed up. And so they just quit. You know what I'm saying? And so definitely I like that. You know what I'm saying? You fought through whatever, because I think I probably would have quit just keeping it all the way 100. I'd have been like, I ah, forget it. It must not be meant for me to rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so. That's a real, hey man, you get the salute for that one. There. That sounded like that was a real difficult task to do right there. You oh, know yeah, what I'm it wasn't fun though. No. <laughs> but yeah, 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 definitely. So, live platoon listeners, definitely. That's that, hey, that's real. This man can do it. You can do it too, definitely. So, now what we're gonna do, man, is transition to the marketing side of things, man. And with uh, live platoon, these interviews, man, we like to really, really focus on a lot of the marketing aspect. Um, because at this point, we believe that the majority of these people out here, these artists, R&B, whatever they do, um, they understand how to record. But when it comes to understanding that you got to do more than make a hot song, I think that's where the, the void happens. But um, what I'm going to do is just drop a few examples of people who did some marketing. And we're going to start with the offline and then we'll transition to the online marketing. But on this um you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give these examples. You you can elaborate on them or even add something, you know, or someone that we didn't touch on. But the first example of some marketing that we have is with 50 Cent when he originally really popped off. Um, it was based off a song, Had a Robin MC. And he was just a genius because he understood that, you know, even if he don't have problems with all these rappers, um, that someone was going to catch feelings and return fire, you know what I'm saying? And really, really say his name out there. And he understood that, you know, the power of, um, you know, association just because, you know, a big rapper say your name, then all of a sudden other people want to know who is this person they're talking about. And so initially you're just going to gravitate. Let me press play on 50 cent. And all of a sudden you're hooked. So, you know what I'm saying? That was just a master genius plan. The second one I have is just um, I really wouldn't call it marketing on this person's side, but the record label used it to their fullest um, because this individual was just strictly being themselves, just 100 percent themselves. But they're being themselves, it was so different than everyone else. And that's DMX. When he came out, he was just so different than everything else in New York at that time that it was very easy to market him. And then on top of that, he actually could rap. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? That was just one of those things where I'm pretty sure people told him, ah, you should make a song like this or do that. And he just stayed to him doing him, um, you know what I'm saying? Barking on the albums and all that. And then and he just came out classic, definitely. Um, and then the last one I have here is what I would like to say is definitely just some... Um, definitely some just going over the top with it but you know this 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 technique 
type of technique may work for an artist out there. And this is Lady Gaga when she uh wore the meat dress to the award show. You know what I'm saying? She knew that the media and everybody would take that and run with that because that's something that never really was done. Um, you know what I'm saying? And for the next three, four days, maybe even weeks, um, you know, she was being talked about. And so the media helped to market her movement. So definitely if you could touch on one of those and just see what you've seen from your perspective or even someone else that I didn't reach on or touch on. And let's just let us know what you think on that. Uh, well, like the 50 Cent story, you know, he he did a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, he he pretty much pioneered what mixtapes are today. Yes, sir. Back then, he flooded the streets with the mixtapes after Columbia wasn't really trying to put out his record. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and a, another person, you know, that I... That I really look up to as far as, as marketing and what he did and how he changed the game is Soldier Boy. Cause he 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 made it popping for people to, to get noticed and get signed off of off of the internet. You know, Justin Bieber and whoever else, you know, came from the internet or whatever. I, I feel like Soldier Boy made that possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um definitely soldiers uh, mentioned a ton of times on this show. So man, I'm just waiting to get that Soldier Boy interview. So Soldier. Hey, holla at your boy, definitely. We need you on live platoon to touch the people. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Soldier really did his thing, man. Like you say, man, he really um, you know what I'm saying? He just I, you know, who who I really don't know what his vision was. Of course, he may have did the interviews, you know, tell him, but maybe he was just having fun, you know what I'm saying? For all we know, he may not have been using the internet to really try to get a deal. He may have just been like, I'm having fun, and it just spiraled into that. But definitely he is a pioneer, without a doubt. Yes, sir. Now, let me ask you, as far as for yourself, what was the moment when you realized that you could use the Internet to blow yourself up? Was it through watching Soldier or was it even before that? No, nah, you know, it was actually through Soldier. But like back when I was like eight or nine years old, I knew that I wanted to make music. But I actually started recording and putting it online, you know, after I saw Soldier Boy go from SoundClick and YouTube to being all over the TV and all over the world, the radio, you know, everything. And after after I seen him go up from the internet, I said, you know, I'm gonna really do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this music and I'm gonna put it online. Oh, okay, okay. Now, when you when you initially made that decision to go ahead and pop it off that way, uh, was there anything that you really had to learn, or did you understand wholly how to use the internet to market it, or what steps did you have to really learn just from step one to really figure it out? You know, I went through you know, trying to find the proper program to use to record and then trying to figure out which sites would would have more people on it that would be more likely to check out my music, you know, which sites to upload, SoundClick, YouTube, uh, Audio Mac, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, you know, trying to figure out, you know, where to get the beats and all that. And yeah. it, I mean, you know, you just gradually get more used to what you're doing and then you just you know you build from that you Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and 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 without a doubt just based off of um, how you said you recorded your first mixtape i know you're not a quitter so you know what i'm saying you you would hit a road map and just keep you know googling until you figured it out then huh yeah cool cool now um now, of course, Soldier definitely um you know kind of pioneered that for you just kind of showing you those methods what what tips and tricks did you pick up from watching his movement or did was it anything in particular that you really said boom i need to take that and do that myself well i mean i didn't i didn't want to do any kind of dance or anything like that as far as taking anything from him but it's just the whole aspect of putting things online and then making music videos and and just making vlogs and everything talking to the fans and whatnot and i i kind of got that from him as far I, i made a lot of vlogs back yeah, earlier days like 2010, 11, and whatnot. But you know, I just mainly took uploading the music and and the the tool using the internet as a tool to get my music out of there. That's, that's pretty much all I got from him. I mean, I don't really have. Oh, okay. I wouldn't say a similar style to him or anything, but no, no. But it, but yeah, it's just far as the marketing, you just kind of took the the video blogs and just do it that way. Okay, now um. Now, let me ask you, because uh, a little earlier in the interview, you kind of stated that you've done uh, 40 mixtapes. What 
Uh, what was the drive for doing that? Was it, is there actually a plan behind that? Or you just have that much music pouring up out of you that you just keep doing it? Or is that really kind of a, a marketing thing that you got going on? You know, it's a little of both. I feel like, you know, if you if you're flooding the Internet and you're constantly putting out music and you're constantly giving people material that they can listen to. And the more songs you have, the the bigger chance that someone has of being able to come across you on any of these websites. And and then once you gain a new fan or say someone just finds me and they really like them what they hear, they got that much more material that they can listen to where they don't get burnt out on say I just got two mixtapes out, you know, they don't get tired of those two mixtapes after, you know, mm. two weeks or three weeks or whatever. Cause after they done with that, you know, they got a whole bunch other records oh. they can go in here and, and become fans of. Cool. Cool. So, um, do you have a, um, a kind of pattern how you put them out or do you just drop them when you get done or do you try to do one once a month or how do you do that? You know, I, I try to do one once a month. Okay. That's, okay. that's kind of what I've been doing since last July. But, uh, you know, I finish it and then I'll, I will try to, you know, set out some time between after I finished and then the release date, the day I'm going to drop it. I'm, I'm trying to market it through Instagram or Twitter, or whatever, promote it, get people to know that the project's coming. Mm-hmm. And then I drop it. And usually before I drop the current mixtape, I, I probably got two or three records already recorded for the next one. Okay, cool. So you never stop working. That's 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 what it is. Then now, um, let me ask you: as far as if someone walks up to you today and ask you, you know, or tell you that they want to, you know, drop music online and do their thing, if they ask you for the first site that they should start building up the fan base on, what site would you recommend? I would say, you know, YouTube. Definitely, I would say get it on YouTube because everybody's on YouTube. As far as you know, the just the dedicated music websites. I've been using Audio Mac a lot lately. I know a lot of people like to use SoundCloud because you can embed the songs on a blog and stuff. And, you know, Datpiff is good as well. Mm, okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now, um, to a new artist who wants to start recording themselves, maybe don't have budget to hit the studio or whatnot, what software would you recommend that they start out using? You know, if someone's just starting out, I would probably recommend Mixcraft. Because it's, it's real simple and easy to use. You know, you get the hang of it real quick, and it, and it just does so much. It's a really good program. I, I highly recommend that for people that's just starting out and want to record music. All right, cool. So a lot of platoon listeners definitely get that mix craft if you got to and, and, and make that thing work. Now, the question I have here for you is that if everything were um, to reset tomorrow and no one had ever heard your music at all, um, but you still had all of your music, vlogs, everything you, you, you've you made up to this time, all of your knowledge, wisdom, experience. But all that you had as far as a budget was a three hundred dollar budget for the next seven days. What would you do to begin to build your fan base up again? I will probably drop a mixtape, use uh 50 of that 300 on that piff to sponsor the mixtape or whatever, try to find some kind of, some kind of promotion thing on online or whatever and see how much that is, you know, mm-hmm. basically work towards promoting again and getting, getting fans again or whatever. Cause I mean, I can just make the music. I don't have to spend nothing on, on recording the material, but getting it, getting it noticed again or whatever I would, I would have to do it because no matter what happens, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop making the music. So I just have to do what I have to do. Yes, sir. Now, is there any particular sites that you would use to promote it? Um, or, you know, uh, or any particular blogs that you really recommend or any, any ways, you know, or, or would it just be a matter of just, you know, dropping it on, um, that piff and sponsoring it? Uh, you know, probably dropping it on Datpiff, maybe uploading it to Mix Connect as well, another mixtape uploading website. You know, I'd probably just post the spam links on Twitter and Instagram or on on my music Facebook and whatnot. But as far as actual dedicated promotional websites, I'm not really familiar with any of them. I haven't really used any sort oh, okay. of promotional websites. I try to build everything organically. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Understandable. All right. Well, live platoon listeners, definitely. He gave you a real, real um, plan that you can use as of today to start building it up. Um, just get your music out there, throw it on that piff and just start working. There's a lot of free sites out there. Um, so like you say, you really 
you don't even have to use all, all 300 you know if you got one mixtape for that next seven days for use 50 and keep you 250 and save it and you know what i'm saying get you a better mic or something but definitely that's a good plan without a doubt yes sir yeah now, get a good mic i would say <laughs> yes sir yes sir make sure that quality is straight now um I do have one last question for you. Now, my question is, of course, I'm not for sure, but I know without a doubt, you know uh, what record label you would like to go to. And of course, you know, what I'm saying just keep that to yourself or with production distribution deal, whatever it is you feel is the perfect situation for you and your music and movement. Say, for instance, if the person who can provide that particular contract or deal uh, ran up on you tomorrow and was like, yo, yo. Tripper, get him. Um, I heard you on live platoon. You, uh, he, you the man out here, man. Um, and I really, really want to, want to, you know what I'm saying? Get a feel for who you are, but I got to leave in about five minutes, but I want to sit down with you, man, and listen to one song with you. Just kind of talk it out. Once we get done, what one song would you play for that individual? Uh, I would probably play a song I recorded last April of 2013. It's called in my, in, in the zone. Okay. And uh, you know, there's a music video for it. Cool. On my cool. YouTube, but yeah. All right. Now now let me ask you why that particular song? Uh I don't know. That song I feel like it's it's got a it's got a good message. I mean not really any kind of inspirational message or anything, but as far as me, because it it's kind of telling the story of me how like at that time in my life, I, feel, I felt like I was kind of falling off or I wasn't really into the music as much as I once was. And then I then I talk about how when I first started or whatever, you know, my lyrics was dope, but my flow was kind of whack. And I and then I, I say I, that, uh, you know, basically now my lyrics kind of aren't as good, but now my the flow got better or whatever. It's just it was kind of recorded at a at a kind of a weird time in my life. And looking back and reflecting on it now, it it's just. It touches me, kind of. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool, cool. Understandable. Yeah, so it's just something that, yeah, yeah. I guess you were probably going through a transitional period or whatnot. And um, and definitely it sounds like that's that's definitely probably the, the song that the people need to hear because um, those ones that, that actually mean something to you for whatever reason is usually the best music, definitely. Not just that you made it to make a radio hit or whatnot um definitely definitely that makes sense so live platoon listeners what we're gonna do since this man has definitely given information um that you can use today to pop yours off you know what i'm saying and and, and make your career be whatever you want it to be we're gonna um visit live platoon.com live plt.com and we will have links to his music and movement so you can check out in my zone um give him five minutes while you're on your bus going to school uh, walking down the street on the treadmill whatever it is you do on your ipod and definitely definitely once you once you hear that one song without a doubt the man got 40 mixtapes so you're gonna have a lot of other material to go through and really get a feel for them and just you know what i'm saying become a fan and of course once you once you listen to that song you need to you know reach out to him on instagram twitter or whatever and just you know let him know you you, you you mess with the movement definitely yeah, definitely so um what i want you to do for us now man is just go ahead and uh give us your shout outs give us your contact information so the fans can you know touch you and um as well as any projects you got coming out and of course you know what i'm saying give us your youtube channel for the skits you got going on just give us everything you got in your shout out so we can you know what i'm saying make sure we, we we stay in touch with you and in tune with you man it's your time go ahead uh man, my uh, go follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both of them are at Tripper Get em. Uh, my music Facebook is facebook.com slash Tripper Get em one, just the number one. Uh, my my uh, YouTube is youtube.com slash Tripper on the track, and that's D A track, and it's all one word. And uh, my upcoming mixtape is dropping the same day that the sketch comedy show launches. Uh, it's called Young King, the Royal Empire, and it's uh, the third entry in a recent trilogy that I started. I started the trilogy in March, and I dropped uh, the first one in March and the second one in April, and I'm dropping the third one in May on May 27th. And then the show launches May 27th. You know, there's going to be six episodes. It will be uh, – each episode is going to be 10 minutes long, and it's going to be a new episode that uploaded every Tuesday for six weeks. And then, uh, you know, hit my audio Mac. 
I got plenty of my uh, mixtape singles on Audio Mac. I got my SoundCloud.com slash Chip Again. Audio Mac.com slash Chip Again. I got a Reverb Nation, ReverbNation.com slash Chip Again. My clothing line is TBD on store.tk. And, uh, you know, that's about it. All right, cool, cool. Any shout outs to anybody you need to shout out? Uh, shout out to Marco Polo with La Platoon. Hi, man. We appreciate it, man. And again, we salute you for coming on, man. And La Platoon listeners, definitely rewind this and, and pick up the, the gems he done dropped all throughout this interview. It's a lot of stuff there that I'm not even going to point out. You just really need to pay attention. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, pick a little bit of his blueprint and put it, you know, with your own movement and music. And, man, you should be straight. But definitely, man, again, we salute. Uh, appreciate you coming through, man. And, and, you know what I'm saying? Stay in touch, man, so we can follow the movement. Definitely. All right, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. Is that to take Slay Beat?